there's a ship right there. But of course, you can't see it. Holy smokes! We're sheephead fishing! Shrimp, not fiddlers. Well, maybe I ought to put on a piece of shrimp. You think? Well, my, my chum may have attracted some. See what you gotta do when it's this foggy? You better make sure you got your lights on and you gotta have your United States Coast Guard approved whistle. All I'm doing is irritating Bob. <laughs> okay, Bob's hooked up. Bob's hooked up. Bob's hooked up. Let me get the let me get the net. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. I said. Okay, let me let me tell everybody. I just said, hey Chief Wakatoa. Why don't you hook something? And he just did. Bob can catch a fish in a god dang mud puddle. <laughs> That's exactly what we're fishing for. That and, and elk sheep headers. Oh yeah, Bob. Okay. Perfection in every situation. Bob? Bob's the man. <laughs> see, see how excited Bob gets though? He, Bob, Bob's Bob. just, Bob's so excited that he can never get excited or his blood pressure will go over 101. <laughs> Bob, Bob's the yang and I'm the yang. We're the two, two exact opposites when it comes to excitement level. Okay, you want to hold them upside down and uh, take a picture? <laughs> All right, enough of that fun. Ow! I just sat on this thing. <laughs> mm, what the hell was that? I just sat on it. Woo! It was a one in a million. It was a one in a million, folks. I was like uh, on Seinfeld, you know, when Jerry Stiller fell on Sufili, Susili pasta and it ran right up his ass. <laughs> I was just telling Bob that one of my favorite combos is my Shimano Triton and my Ugly Stick Striper because it's a medium light seven foot and here we are fishing the deep sea ocean out here out at the inlet with a one ounce egg sinker and if you get a good sized fish you can have so much fun on this combo I love sporting this combo It's, it's so much fun to catch a good fish on. And the only person who's caught a good fish so far is Mud Puddle Bob. <laughs> Mud Puddle Bob. The only other fish I've seen caught out here was one other 
one other sheep shed so far today. And Bob's got a yellow mouth and a drum. So hopefully we'll get some, we'll get some more because low tide is in a few hours. And that's when they seem to be biting. I hope it's not what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a toad. A toad. Dave. Ah, drum. Drum. I got me a drummer. And let's see how he's up. I got the net. He's freaking out. He's freaking out. Finally got me a drum on the fiddler crabs. The perfect size eater too. Finally. Mm. Now, now you can call me Mud Puddle Dave. Come on. MP. <laughs> well, nobody, nobody's as good as Mud Puddle Bob. He catches them in a mud puddle. There we go, folks. That's what we're looking for. We'll take these and sheep's head. That's a perfect sandwich drum right there. Mr. Sandwich Drum. Oh, rubber lips. jackets at the boat ramp it is freezing cold out of the jetties and that fog this morning made it even worse so now we need to lick our wounds I dumped all my fiddlers out in the ocean screw them things I'm not keeping them alive for another week or two Bob couldn't even get rid of a damn shrimp when we were where we just left from he couldn't even give a shrimp away so we're going to lick our wounds and clean what we got. Two drum and a yellow mouth. Woohoo! village. Yeah, they also fly over the roof of my house and I can't even hear my own television set inside the house. <laughs> Aaron Martz. A customer of mine used to keep them things flying and he'd say the same thing. Why do they fly over my house? Because he lived down the street from me. Hey, look what we got here. We got guys that are really afraid of the stick that I got this camera on. They're scared to death of the stick. Let's show them how scared they are of the stick. They don't like the stick. 
They don't like it. <laughs> Let's see these guys. Here comes, here comes the stick. <laughs> All right, finally home after a long day. Not much fish catching out at the inlet. I saw a lot of people running around, and the more they run around, I guess the more they're thinking they're going to go to another spot and tear them up. But we stood our ground and stayed in one area where I've caught the black drum, so we caught the black drum. We caught our two, our two sandwich makers. So now I'm home having a PBR, of course. Here's to you. And now, I'm going to get three long fishing days grime off my non-skid deck of my aluminum boat. Might be a little bit different than your boat, and I'm sure it is highly different than your boat. I got an anti-skid paint, lots of sirens in the background from the fire station that's right around the corner, creating all kinds of... Okay, they, they slowed down. And I've been using this on my deck. Super clean, tough task cleaner, degreaser, or dissolves grease super fast, super easy. Well, I might not necessarily have grease on my deck. If I get grease on my paint, I'm going to freak. But what I do get is from this deck paint sitting out in the sun, um, obviously in the Florida sun, it does get where if some oils hit it, whatever it happens to be, I'm the, I'm the blame as much as anybody. I'll be eating a piece of fried chicken and I will drop chicken on the, on the deck and somebody will step on it and make a grease spot. Well, I've found that super clean We'll get rid of those grease spots because I just painted from the console back not long ago. So if you got a tough degreasing job or if you got a boat like mine with the kind of liner paint that's in it, I recommend the Super, super, uh, super Clean. It can be available at Walmart, uh, many other places, retail locations. It's easiest to find at Walmart. And it seems to do a really good job. What I do is I wet the deck a little bit, spray this on, I hit it with my super brush, and I just let it sit for a while and then wash it off. But it seems to do a very good job on this paint, this uh, epoxy, they actually called it a plastic paint. They mean epoxy paint. So uh, I don't want greasy spots on my deck so I'm gonna continue using super clean because it works and I'm going to run out my outboard I run it out in the barrel I'll show it to you I can hear it right now it's overflowing there's the barrel I run my outboard out in all right and the whole reason being is because my 250 Suzuki has that low water pickup nose cone, pointy nose cone thing on the front. And I don't feel like wrapping tape around it. They say wrap tape around it. So I don't do that. I let it run in the barrel of fresh water at operating temperature. And I think this is truly the ticket to clean your outboard is get yourself a barrel, especially if you had a 250 Suzuki with the low water pickups and that pointy front of your uh, gear case. So that's what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to clean up the boat. So I'll bid you all farewell till next time.